Hi there and welcome to your video on the soil triangle. Um, this is a, um, you will not have to memorize this, but you will definitely need to know how to use this. Um, this can, this has in the past appeared um, on the national exam. Um, so either do the calculations um, that are associated with it or there are questions that can be answered on this, but today we are just gonna talk about the calculations. All right, here's what you need to understand. Um, particles are made of, or excuse me, um, soil is made up of three types of particles, sand, silt, and clay. Um, so you need to, I'm trying to keep this, sorry, straight so that you don't have to look at this all weird. All right, soil. Soil is comprised of three types of particles um, for the most part. Um, again here, sand, silt, and clay. And the percentages that exist in soil and um, the way that we measure those percentages is something that we will either talk about in class or do in class. Um, uh, anyway, so those percentages um, have been universally agreed upon uh, to have specific names. As an example, everything that has the percentage um, of sand, silt, and clay um, that is in this particular region of this triangle is called silt. Um, this means when you're talking about a kind of soil like loam or silty clay loam, everybody is in board <coughs> with in general what it is. So I'm going to show you um, how math problems like this may appear um, on uh, the national exam and on whatever assessments that you have in class. So um, go ahead and get this out and take a look at it. We're going to practice. I highly encourage you to pause when I ask you to pause and try these problems on your own. Um, otherwise, all you're doing is affirming that I can do this, not that you can do this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see that you have a table here to fill out. So um, uh, you, the, let's just start with the beginning. So with the first one, I have an example. You can see you have 75% sand, 10% silt, and 15% clay is called sandy loam. How do we know this? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so notice that this triangle has three equivalent scales on it. So you go from 0% to 100% on each side. Um, these arrows also tell you how to read this. So let, let's go ahead and discuss. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So. Uh, let's go ahead and find each one of those numbers. 75% uh, sand is right here. 10% silt is right here. And then 15% clay is right here. The name of this stuff is where these three, if you were to draw lines, these three lines meet. I don't, I mean, you can draw lines for all of them, but at some point, uh, that we're gonna be doing, but at some point, you're going to run into um, uh, problems. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let's see how to do this. Now you're gonna notice, it. you know, you could go in this direction, you can follow lines in this direction, you can follow lines in this direction, which way do you go? Note the way that the numbers are oriented here, that tells you which way you're following the lines. So in other words, you are going to find out where You're going to find out where these three lines meet. So um, let's go with clay. Clay is going to go in this direction. Silt goes in this direction. And sand goes in this direction. So you can see they all meet right here in sandy loam, which is why it says sandy loam. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. Um, you have uh, 10, 83, and seven. Um, it's usually given to you in sand, silt, and clay, but you'll, you won't be asked to memorize that. Um, the, the nice part about remembering the particles in these three orders, it goes from biggest to smallest. All right, so 10% sand, that's going to be right here. 83% silt, is going to be right 
And again, a lot of this is just approximate here, and then 7% clay. So where do these three things meet? You have this line going this way, this line going this way, and this line coming all the way across, which means that you meet up in silt. So this is called silt. I know that kind of seems redundant given that the vast majority of this is silt, but you know, here you go. All right. Um, so I'm gonna be skipping some of them, <coughs> excuse me, because um, you need to um, be able to do these on your own. I will post the key for this on my website so that you can check your work. So go ahead and give this one a try on your own. Check it and then come to class with any questions. All right, now you may see problems where you have um, one missing. I'm hoping that you noticed that you have three components, so therefore they need to add up to 100%. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, you have 42 and you have 37. When you add up 42 and 37, you had 79. So what do you need to have to get to 100? This needs to be 21% right here. All right, <coughs> now you have your three percentages. You can go up into the triangle and take a look. So you've got 42% um, sand, which is about right here, 21% silt, which is about right here, and then 37% clay, which is about right here. And so where those three things meet is going to be right in this area, which is clay loam. So so we have that. All right, let's do one more. Um, if you have 52% silt, 21% clay, how much sand do you have? 52 plus 21 is 73, which means this is gonna be 27. All right, so you have 27% sand, which is gonna be right here. 52% silt, which is gonna be right here. And then 21% clay, which is gonna be right here where those three things meet together. Let's see. It is going to be just on this side. Um, so it's gonna be in the loam area. Okay, um, so you can see as we get, <coughs> excuse me, towards the bottom, uh, you have one here that has um, only one percentage uh, but is in the clay loam area. Basically, as long as these two make it so this adds up to 100 and it is anywhere in the clay loam area, it's correct. So please realize for these, let me mark this right now, multiple answers possible. And then, good grief. These have no percentages, so as long as you do something that, that lands in that particular area, you're in good shape. Um, so, uh, you know, why? The, I guess the question is, why do we do this? And the answer is that, um, A, we have a common language, and then B, knowing what kind of soil you have tells you about its water retention properties, its nutrient retention properties, which then tells you what kinds of plants can grow there, which then tells you what kind of other organisms will live um, in that primary productivity. It all starts with the soil. Um, the um, quote-unquote best kind of soil is going to be any kinds of your loams for the most part because they're going to be that sweet spot, uh, sweet spot of water retention and, and porosity and, and nutrient retention. That's not to say that there aren't some organisms that enjoy this particular kind of sand. I mean, look at the desert and the life that it supports. Um, but the majority of things that grow are going to be in here, and certainly when you're talking about agriculture, loam is where it's at. So give the rest a try. Um, check yourself on the key that will be on the website, and then come.
come to class with questions.